If you like the rear end of your bike to be tucked and a little rowdy, then this bike review is gonna be for you. In this review, I'm gonna review an interesting bike called the Coffee Grinder from a brand called Ride Endpoint. And it promises to be a really interesting and zippy mixed terrain gravel grinder bike. Find out what I like and dislike about it in this video. Welcome back Pathless Peddlers. And if you're new to the channel, if you love 650B bikes, gravel grinder bikes, the supple life, then you have found your people, hit that subscribe button. And this video, like all the other videos on the channel are free for you guys to watch, but not always free for me to create. So if you appreciate the time and effort it takes to make these videos, consider supporting the channel via PayPal, Patreon, or getting a supple shirt. So if you're not familiar with the brand Ride Endpoint, they are actually based in Richmond, Virginia, and all their bikes are made in the US in Ithaca, New York by FBM. F and B, FBM, I think it's FBM. And they have a couple of product offerings. This is a interesting mishmash between two products. They have their coffee grinder bike, which is a kind of a go fast mixed terrain bike and the hunter gatherer bike, which is more of their relaxed off-road tour. And they also sell a hunter gatherer fork, which is low trail and has the brazons uh, for racks and the rando rack. And this bike that they sent is an interesting mix of both of those bikes. This is the coffee grinder frame with the hunter gatherer fork. If you're a bike nerd like me, then you totally appreciate this kind of weird combination of bicycle. Typically bike design is pretty siloed. You'll have uh, people designing a road bike and they'll be quick in the rear, but no fitments for a rack or anything in the front. Or you have people designing a rando bike or a touring bike, uh, which has all the brazons you want, but tends to be a little on the slower side in terms of handling. This bike kind of combines the best of both worlds, uh, making a really interesting bike. So the frame and fork on this bike is made out of steel and it's got through axle front and rear and disc brakes. The front wheel has a dynamo hub and the front fork is this segmented construction. Pretty beefy looking. It's got brazons to run both low riders as well as mid fork eyelets uh, to put on a rando specific rack. The handlebars are salsa cowbells, which I like because of their narrow drop and just that slight bit of flare. The brifters are SRAM, which operate a SRAM uh, front derailleur as well as a SRAM mountain bike rear derailleur. And I gotta say, I love the drivetrain on this belt. It actually uses a mountain bike double a race face I believe it's a 4228 I don't know why more gravel bikes slash adventure bikes don't use this combination it is way more useful to uh, the average rider to the person that's actually gonna go on off-road adventures to have a mountain bike double than the compact road crank or even a lot of these one buys that we see on bikes today so love the component choice if I were to build up a bike this is, it would look a lot like this. And of course the bike is shod with WTB Horizon Byways in 650B. What else would I want to ride? On the rear of the bike, there are some fitments for a fender, but not so much a rack. In terms of tire clearance on the coffee grinder side of the bike, uh, it'll take 700 by 35 or 650B by 47. So unfortunately, this is the largest tire that will fit in uh, at least the rear of the bike. There's plenty of room in the fork. The fork seems a little bit mismatched in terms of tube diameter. Typically when they sell the coffee grinder, it comes with a carbon fork. But for this one, they asked me what I wanted and I wanted something strange and they delivered. It's actually a pretty fun uh, combination. So enough of just the details, let's go into how it rides. So starting from the rear, this bike is fast. If you like bikes with a short rear stay, you will love this bike. The rear uh, chain stay is 418. That's a pretty short chain stay. And the way that affects the ride is that it accelerates really quickly. It feels like the bike just wants to get up and go. When you're climbing and putting power to the pedals, the bike surges. The whole experience on the rear is one of making you feel fast. Even though you might not be that fast, it just feels so responsive. On the front end of the bike, the fork is a low trail design, uh, which if you've not not ridden, uh, it takes like a hot second to get used to. Uh, you'll notice there's some strange steering dynamics going on, but after a while your body compensates. I, I still haven't figured out a way to, to really describe it well. In some ways it feels a little bit more overly responsive than your typical uh, mid-trail steering. But regardless, it felt weird for the first like 20 minutes, but after a while uh, it just felt natural. I'd say the front end matches the rear end pretty well, uh, making for a nice tidy short wheelbase, short chain stay, responsive handling bike. I did not, however, get a chance to really fully utilize all the brazons and see how uh, the bike would act with uh, a load 
this bike review had to be turned around really quickly because we're gonna be out of town for a shoot. And this is actually a customer bike, so I have to get it back to them so they can prep it for the customer. But all that said, the bike is a blast to ride. Going on flat terrain, it makes you want to hammer. Going up climbs, you feel like you're surging uphill. And going downhill, it's, you know, it's a little rowdy, but controllable. The big supple tires make a difference. Thinking of the bikes I've reviewed on the channel so far, uh, the bike it reminded me most of is the Surly Midnight Special. Not the same exact geometry, but kind of the same thinking in terms of having a quick and responsive uh, road plus, I hate that term, uh, road bike. So if you like the Midnight Special, but want something with a rando low trail fork, then this might be a bike to consider. So what are my likes and dislikes? Uh, my first big like is that it's a combination of uh, kind of two extremes of bikes. You get short and responsive on one end and you get super functional and rando nerdy on the other end and you put them together to form this really fun and interesting bike that kind of defies various silos. I love the quickness paired with the utility. Now I really don't see why there aren't more bikes like this. You know, just because you want to carry stuff doesn't mean you want to be on a full on touring bike. Give us something interesting. Give us something like this bike. And that's it really for the likes. I mean, I really honestly enjoyed the ride of this bike. I, you know, hopped on it, had a big grin on my face and I actually did something I don't usually do in a bike review. When I was shooting the B-roll, I stopped to try to kind of capture uh, my feelings on the bike because it was so fun. You know, usually, review a bike mid-ride but holy crap this bike is awesome <laughs> it's all the things i love about the rear end the midnight special and they fixed all the things i hate about the front end <laughs> so what didn't i like about this bike well i feel like the biggest limitation is actually tire clearance in the rear it kind of maxes out at this tire you're not going to be able to stuff anything bigger in there than this uh, 650b by 47 which is Plenty big, don't get me wrong, but after having ridden a bike like the G-Road with those uh, Schwabi Byte 650B by 2.1, I really wanted this bike to uh, fit those tires. I mean, it'll fit, fit it in the front, but in terms of the rear, it's just not gonna work. So if you want a bike with more tire clearance than this, then you gotta look elsewhere. So something like uh, you know the, the Breadwinner G-Road would, would pull it off or even the Midnight Special. What I do think would be an interesting combination would actually be to take the uh, Hunter Gatherer fork and stick it on the Midnight Special and get rid of that ugly Unicron fork and have something a little bit sleeker, something low trail, something with more brazons. Another dislike is because it's a small company, limited runs, hard to get a hold of a bike to throw a leg over. Uh, as of now, they're you know ramping up for a production run, so everything's pre-order. The frames are a little bit on the spendy side. The coffee grinder with a whiskey fork, I believe, runs about fifteen hundred bucks. The hunter gatherer with the steel fork is about thirteen hundred. You can combine the two for I don't know that, that price is not listed. So you kind of have those issues to contend with. Uh, not being able to test ride the bike, and also just the things that come with a small company uh, trying to pr produce frames in the US. So once again, this bike is super fun. I love how it kind of defies conventions. It gives you the rando front, but the road rear. There's that uh, saying of the, the three rotating spheres or something, where you need basically three things to make something interesting, because one is boring, two is predictable, but three, that's when they play off each other and something magical happens. And I think this bike approaches that philosophically uh, I would have loved to have more clearance in the rear because then I think that would truly make it an interesting bike we have the short rear end you've got the uh, low trail random front but you can also make it off-road uh, capable with a bigger tire someone could do that mines would be blown they just go Pfft. all right so that's it for my look at the uh, ride endpoint coffee gatherer bike coffee gatherer bike that's what I'm going to call it if you have any questions about this bike, leave those in the comments below. What do you guys think of my weird idea of a tucked rando off-road bike? Is that crazy or would you guys be interested in that as well? Are there any production bikes out there on the market that are like that? I'd love to know. Let me know, let me know in the comments. And once again, if you like this video, like, share, subscribe. Support independent bikey content because I made zero dollars making this review. Check out those PayPal links, those Patreon links, or those... Supple shirt links. And until next time, keep the supple side down.